Welcome back to Darkness in Lore. Today, we're going to find out who is the ultimate queen of mythology, out of the mighty Hera and the ethereal Frigg. We'll do this by evaluating their queenly qualities, using our ranking system and giving a point for each category the respective goddess wins. But first, we need to introduce our mighty matriarchs. First up, hailing from the frosty and brutal realm of Norse mythology, is the regal and intelligent Frigg. She is the daughter of Fjorgen and an unnamed Vanir goddess. As queen of the Aesir, Frigg governs the forces of the Norse pantheon with a combination of wisdom and grace. On the sunlit slopes of Greek mythology stands her opponent in this competition, Hera, a strong and vengeful deity born of the union between the titans, Cronus and Rhea. So let's get into it, and find out who is the ultimate female monarch in all of mythology. Domain and Authority the breadth and majesty of a ruler's domain is important in determining how powerful and successful a queen is. Hera sits on her throne alongside her husband, the mighty king of the gods, Zeus, in a glittering marble palace. Perched atop the snowy peaks of Mount Olympus, the resplendent palace commands an awe-inspiring view, the most splendid of the Greek Olympians' palaces all nestled amongst the clouds. As wife of the thunder god Zeus, Hera has domain over the glory of all of the skies and heavens. After the Titanomachy, a ten-year war between Zeus and his fellow gods against the older Titans, Zeus and his brothers drew straws, and Zeus drawing the longest straw became the ruler of the skies, the gods and mortals. Poseidon drew the seas and Hades the underworld, the realm of the dead. When Zeus decided to marry Hera, she became the queen and consort of these domains, making her the second most powerful deity in all of Greek mythology. Similarly, Frigg's domain was given to her by way of marriage to the king of the Norse Aesir gods, Odin. In Norse myth, there are nine worlds, the most important of these worlds, Asgard, was where the Aesir gods resided, and Frigg and Odin were rulers of this entire domain. The Norse sources we have regarding what Asgard looked like are sparse, but we know that there was supposedly a giant unfinished wall, around the perimeter, and that there were twelve realms within this world. This included Valhalla, the hall for warriors slain in battle. This hall was said to be spectacular to behold with shields lining the roof and a feast set out every night. Also among the realms of Asgard was Frigg's own private domain, known as Fensalir, which was said to be a pleasant meadow or marsh-like place. So even though both queens had some of the largest domains in all mythology, one goddess stands above the other with her domain. Here percentage terms, Hera has to take the win in this category. Frigg was the queen of Asgard, one of nine worlds in the Norse mythos. Hera on the other hand, had at least one-third of the ancient Greek universe under her domain being the queen of the skies and mortals. So the point goes to the Greek goddess. 1-0 to Hera. Delegates and allies. A queen needs a skillful and powerful entourage to keep her kingdom running like a well-oiled machine. She needs to have powerful allies to help her against any threats, she needs subordinates to serve her, and she needs trusted advisors who can provide her with counsel and guidance. Frigg, Queen of the Aesir, is not only the queen of a cohort of female goddesses known as the Osinia, but also has a close relationship with the mightiest Aesir god Thor, who once disguised himself as Freya to protect her from marrying a giant. In addition to her powerful bodyguards, she has a retinue of powerful handmaidens. Among them, Ayr the Healer, Fulla, who keeps her secrets, and Helin, who guards the men that Frigg chooses to protect. In contrast, Hera, though an incredible goddess, is not known for her friendships with other gods, or particularly other goddesses. However, she is the mother of Ares, the Greek god of war, and Hephaestus, the blacksmith god, who would both come in handy in a war situation. She also is said to have asked Gaia and Tartarus to create Typhon, a monstrous dragon-like creature that is reportedly stronger than Zeus himself. So while it is clear that both Frigg and Hera have strong military associates, Hera's tumultuous relationships with other goddesses and her philandering husband's children don't earn her many close allies. So the point goes to Frigg, making it one-to-one. -one. Wisdom Both Hera and Frigg display great wisdom and intelligence in their respective myths. For example, not only does Hera use her wit when punishing her stepson Heracles by manipulating his mind and making him mad, resulting in him killing his wife and children, avoiding directly harming him herself, which would put her in the wrath of Zeus. But she also uses her military strategy to aid the Achaeans and Athena, manipulating events in the Trojan War, helping them become the eventual victors. Frigg's wisdom however is a lot more grand. Not only was she incredibly intelligent, but she was seen by the Norse as being able to practice satyr magic, which lets her see the weave of destiny and the fate of men. She is also said to outwit her wise husband Odin on several occasions, 
It is because of this that Frigg gets a point as the most wise queen in mythology, pushing Frigg into the lead with two points to one. Failures Next, we'll discuss their failures and weaknesses, and we'll give the point to the goddess with less major failure. Hera is seen by many as a jealous and vengeful goddess, who punishes her husband's mistresses and illegitimate children out of anger. Although this isn't the case every time, as already mentioned, she did assist Zeus's daughter Athena, whose mother was a water nymph called Metis, in the Trojan War. However her jealous anger does often lead to Hera's failures. For example, Hercules bested almost every one of Hera's tricks, from the snakes she put into his crib, to the Nemean lion, which was said to have been raised by Hera. Another time she failed due to her jealousy and ire, was in the case of Leto, who Zeus made pregnant. When Hera learned of this, she forbade any place on earth, under the sky, or in the sea from giving her a place to give birth. Eventually, Leto found a place with a loophole, and gave birth to two of the most powerful Olympians, Artemis and Apollo, angering Hera greatly. Frigg's failures aren't widely documented in the Norse myths we know, apart from one huge failure resulting from a small mistake, and an evil trickster god which had catastrophic consequences for the entire Norse universe. In this tale, Odin learnt that his and Frigg's son would be killed, and this would signal the end of the world, known as Ragnarok. Frigg was terrified, and went around the world getting every object and soul to promise it wouldn't hurt Balder, but missed out the mistletoe, because it was a young plant and she deemed it insignificant, this arrogant oversight cost her dearly. Loki learns of this, and eventually tricks Frigg's other son Hodor, who is blind into shooting an arrow of mistletoe into Balder, killing him, and signaling the start of Ragnarok. Although Hera has failed many times, Frigg's single mistake of dismissing the mistletoe, played a large part in the coming of Ragnarok, the end of the Norse world. So the point for less of a grand failure goes to Hera, making it 2-2. Talents and Powers Next, a queen must have talent, and the ultimate queen in all mythology must have incredible superhuman talents and powers. Luckily, Frigg and Hera both have these. Frigg, as already discussed, has access to divination through her satyr magic. Though as she doesn't share this with others, it is not helpful for her kingdom, at least not overtly. She is also an incredible weaveress, spinning clouds into clothes for the Aesir gods. And finally, she owned magic falcon feathers that enabled her to fly and shapeshift into a falcon. Hera's supernatural powers and talents were vast and diverse. We already know that she was able to use mind control to cause Hercules to go mad and kill his family. Hera could also transform others into plants and animals, such as turning a distracted worshipper into a crane and a lover of Zeus, Io, into a cow. Being one of the Greek Olympians, Hera also has immortality and is an ageless being. Norse gods, in contrast, not only can die, as in the case of Balder, but they are destined to die according to the myth of Ragnarok. It is because of this, and her many other powers, that Hera gets another point for her abilities, making the score 3-2 to Hera. Although Frigg fought a good fight and was a great queen of the gods, Hera is the ultimate queen of the gods in all mythologies. Despite her flaws, her unwavering determination and assertive leadership make her the quintessential queen.